All right, today we're going up to Stennis. Uh, I've got about seven hours left. We're gonna go up and meet uh, Lee and Mike. They've got a Bell 505. We're gonna do some flying with them and then fly in the 505, but uh, should be a fun day, fun uh, lesson today. So we're going flying with Mike and Lee and Lester and Brandon's going to be there. Welcome. This is the Candy Cane 505 and if you see us flying around, um, share a picture and do hashtag I spy the Candy Cane, Candy Cane helicopter. helicopter. Right. So we might just stop and give you a ride or send you a hat or do something. Fun. That's what I did. I hashtagged it and that's how I got. <laughs> but we're going to we're going to we're going to talk about their story and how they came to be flying from the Dominican Republic through Mississippi. How did we end up here? Well, we started in Mirabelle, Canada, where they're made. <laughs> and then uh, we decided we'd never been down the East Coast, so we took a trip down the East Coast, down to Florida. and. Uh, so we flew from Fort Lauderdale to, uh, went through the Bahamas, got fuel in a couple spots that you wouldn't know that there's fuel, but I did lots of research and found all the different fuel spots. We stopped in uh, Turks and Caicos for fuel, and then we went to the north part of Dominican Republic, and then we continued on south. Um, Spent probably a week down there wow. before we turned around and came back up. Nice. Now we're making our way to Alaska eventually. Well, and today we're going to fly the 505, so let's go check it out. Yeah. Let's do it. It's a nice machine, and in fact, you don't have the big old post like And it's got 505 six. horsepower. Oh, Thus yeah. the name. Thus the Bell 505. Thus the name. Can be flown from either seat. Nice. Uh, I actually end up sitting left seat, and Mike sits right seat. That's awesome. I take the instructor role. Yeah. Um, In your background for uh, helicopters, that's all helicopter time? Oh, I have a, a couple hundred hours in airplanes, but that was okay. years ago. So I did uh, all civilian trained. I went to model little helicopters in Hawaii. Uh, got my oh, five ratings awesome. there, CFI, CFII, wow. Marshall. That was in uh, 2004. And then 2005 was a, was a flight instructor. 2006, I went to Alaska. I flew uh, Tempsco doing tours in the A Star. Wow. Ended up back in Hawaii, flew a couple thousand hours there doing tours over the volcano in a huge 500. Wow. And then uh, decided that I was losing my skills and I wanted to get back to Alaska and actually do some off airport stuff. So. And now you live in Alaska. Yep, live that's, in Alaska. That's where, okay. I spent a couple of seasons moving, uh, moving drills and uh, doing all the technical precision uh, long line flight flying. And then I met Mike and we decided to start our own company. We started with one little R44. Next year we bought another one. Next year another one. Oh, wow. Ended up uh, getting a 66 and a B2 A Star. And uh, last year we sold our 135 business. We were doing mostly telecommunications and stuff. Cool. Um, any, all kinds of remote flying. Well, we'll talk about all that stuff airborne because that's going to be a fascinating okay. story. But this is really nice looking. And what's the story behind the paint job? So this was actually ordered by the Indonesian president. He ordered a few different helicopters and they all had crazy paint schemes. Um, and then when he didn't get reelected, he decided he couldn't take delivery of his helicopter. Yeah. So it sat at Bell and uh mike and i first saw it and we were like oh that's really kind of obnoxious yeah <laughs> and then we saw it in person and we were like wow we really love it it does pop and we've decided that uh it's our conversation starter we hand out candy canes everywhere we go ah cool and we just fly around spreading joy and happiness and take people for flights and if you see us fly by you do hashtag i spy the candy cane helicopter and <laughs> we might just land and take you for a flight there you go <laughs> awesome
So the start is super simple. We'll get our uh, timer going. So you're going to hit the enter on there, and then to start, you literally, oh, good, let's give him a 10 second warning. 10 seconds! Actually, more like two seconds. Two seconds! <laughs> All right. So hit the enter button, that'll start the timer, and then you push in and turn to the right and then let go. But keep your hand on there. Okay. Now we're going to watch our first limit indicator. Right now it's going to be the MGT, and this looks like a smooth, easy start, and it always is in this machine. It's really easy. We've got our blades spinning. We've got our pressure temperature coming up. We've got NR coming up. Now we know it's not going to be hot, hot start, so you don't have to be ready to turn it off. It's all good. Will it auto shut itself off? No. I won't. So once we're stable here at uh, 64 on the NR, we'll turn on the generator, which is here. I always watch to make sure my amps actually did something both look good, and my light went out. So these are the cast warnings. This is the page here. WOG is weight on ground, so we know we're actually on the ground. Oh wow! That's when our collective or uh, hops yeah. is not going. We're also okay to shut down, so this thing tells you immediately wow. when as soon as you can shut down. Uh, the doors are a little bit different than you're used to, and if you can bring it towards Mike and he'll just kind of demonstrate how to how to close it. I have the door. You have the door. Wow, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to slam right. it that hard, but you can do that, and then you want to make sure that all the pins are in. You've got three pins: one, two, and three. Look what pins am I looking for? Open the door. One, yeah. two, and three. three. And it says a little white arrow that says latch. And then we're going to get the AC going. Oh, yeah. That's part of the helicopter. Right. Although that one's got it, too, so we're fancy. We'll roll the throttle up. All we do is hit this, and I'm going to do it on my collective. Okay. So now our RPM is going to go up. It literally says fly. Yep. And it has a little bit of a reverse pitch on the blade. So if you actually lift a tiny bit on the collective, it'll smooth that out. Wow. You can feel out that smooths out. But we still have weight on the ground, so all good helicopter is yours when you're ready right now we're on the engine page once we get going I'll give you the uh, okay so I'm gonna okay. pick up pedal turn to the right and then we'll call them and probably go out onto the taxiway there yeah, like I think he'll give it to you yeah okay all right do we need landing light on there we go we certainly can to make ourselves look pretty I'm all about visibility there Lester Absolutely. <laughs> I think right. we're a high-vis helicopter Right. All right, here we go. Oh, yeah, it does need a little, little bit of pedal. Let's see, we're covering at 92. Okay, so calm is on the trigger? It is. Set a tower helicopter, 505 Hotel Mike from Millionaire. We'd like to depart the taxiway Alpha southbound. I don't know if I transmitted or not. Does it sound like I transmitted? I think so. Why don't you give it a try? Set a tower helicopter, November 505 Hotel Mike in front of Millionaire with Fox Cut. like to depart to the coast. Helicopter 505 Hotel Mike, depart from the ramp at your own discretion. There's caution. And the wind 230 at 6 miles, limit over 299 or 7. Hey, our discretion. There's the takeoff five Hotel Mike. Yeah, so yours sounds different when you transmit, so it mine does. must not be. I wonder if it's because uh, of how you're plugged in there. Oh, uh, okay. The GoPro, maybe? Okay, well, you got the radios then, okay. for just simplicity's sake. All right, well, I'm going to get her going. We're in the green, 96.5. Here we go. Wow. It's so smooth. Right. How many hours on it right now? 86, I think is what it says. Yep, 86.5.
I'm gonna press the clear button, which is gonna give us a map so we can see everything. So probably about 60 knots or so, climb uh, out, 70. Yep. This is your ball. Oh, that's where it was, okay, good. You would step on the, the wood part of the sailboat. Step on the bottom? Yes. Gotcha. Cool. And then once we're on the go, you can actually see where your wind is coming from. Yeah. A seven knot headwind. Cool. So, how long have you been flying? Oh, geez. Well, I, my first went flying when I was 15 years old with my stepdad. And, uh, 040, Grant. His little one Cessna, Cessna 172. So I was 15. I'm 49 now. So you started uh, in in, in airplane. Yeah. Runway 18, taxi Bravo Alpha Charlie. Let's turn left out here. So two towers up ahead. We're just going to go left up. We're the same route we did earlier. Perfect. And this thing will tell us where those towers are. You can actually see them right here. Yeah. We can see our airspace. And if I zoom out a little bit, this will actually show us our entire fuel range. Wow. So the solid circle, you never want to get to that range. That's yeah. And that's, this is your 20-minute reserve with a dotted line. That's your pucker factor? Yep. And it's definitely been helpful for us doing some of the long legs that we've been doing. Uh, but yeah, I started flying airplanes when I was really young, and that's what I thought I was going to do with my life. But I ended up uh, changing course for a while, and I ended up snowboarding, traveling the world, following snow. And then... Uh, when I stopped snowboarding, I moved to Hawaii, and somebody told me about helicopter school, and I was like, I should do that. Yeah. So that was in 2003, 2004. So I went through school in 2004, did all five ratings, all civilian trained, so commercial, private, CFI, CFII, and then I instructed there for another thousand hours. And went off to Alaska and started flying the big helicopters. Did you fly like the volcanoes and stuff? I did, did yeah. Did you land on the volcano? No, nope, never gone landed. In? Well, only because I had an emergency one and had to. Oh, yeah? And I had to ship the helicopter back to Kona. Center Tower, Troy 040, be ready. Had an engine ship light come on. Oh, zero, really? Center yep. Tower, wind 200. Zero, zero, but that's the Hughes 500. That's a. Uh, <laughs> Clear for takeoff. <laughs> fairly confident in that thing. Yeah. Take off 1 8 all course, Troy 040. And then you ended up in Alaska. I did. I ended up uh, going back to Alaska after flying tours for a couple thousand hours in Hawaii. Got bored of flying over the volcano every day, which I love the volcano, but uh, flying and taking off at the same airport every day got a little bit, a little boring for me. So I went to Alaska and got into utility flying, working in the man camps and working wow. on mineral exploration projects and doing all the external load stuff. Learned how to sling. I was terrible at it at first. The first slink job I did was moving dunnage, which is just a bunch of wood so that they can set down and have a um, more stable platform for the drills. And, and the, my guys were really patient with me and they'd run around after trying to catch the dunnage and help get it on wow, the ground. But, yeah. uh, but eventually I got uh, really good at it and ended up, um, that became my focus in my career and I started flying the Hughes 500 doing drill moves and precision long line on big drill projects. And, and it's just the, I, I'm so passionate about the challenge of it. Yeah. So. That's awesome. So, how long were you in, I mean, you're still in Alaska, so you guys opened the school, right? That's where, that's where. No, no, I haven't, I haven't taught anyone for a long time. Oh, really? Yeah, but uh, no, we, so I was working out in the field for months and months at a time. And uh, finally, Mike and I decided that we were going to start our own business so that I could do the same challenging flying, but from home. So uh, I met my guy in Valdez and had no idea I'd ever stay in Alaska, but, but I did. We bought an R-44 and started with one uh, helicopter, single pilot 135, and ended up having all this business that we had no idea really existed. Kept, us, kept me busy all summer long, so at the end of that season, we bought a second helicopter. And we're doing mostly um, telecommunications, so all the cell phone sites, all the Coast Guard sites, building them, maintaining them, putting in solar panels, slinging concrete out there, um, putting in the culverts, so just really fun technical stuff. Wow. Uh, ended up getting a third helicopter and a fourth, fifth, and uh, ended up, did that for the last 10 years. I, I was the chief pilot, I did all the hiring and training of all the pilots. And Mike was the director of operations, and our other partner, Douglas, he was our maintenance coordinator. So between the three of us, we had those pos positions held pretty well. 
I quit your background. 15. Fly background, I came from uh, flying fixed plane as well. I learned to fly fixed plane in Alaska by my early 20s. And flew privately for a couple of thousand hours before I ever decided to get, uh, get my commercial rating, my CFI. One of the reasons I decided to do that is I was in the Civil Air Patrol at the time. Helicopter 5 Hotel Mike, are you wanting flight following outside of my class? Delta Keesler is closed today. Uh, yes, please. We're, we'd like flight following uh, for another 10 miles or so, and then we'd like to turn around and come back with you. I was in the Civil Air Patrol at the time, and they didn't have any instructors, no instructor pilots, so we had a hard time uh, getting people checked out and current, keeping them current. So I went to a school, got my uh, commercial rating and my CFI rating, and came back to Alaska, fought for the uh, Civil Air Patrol, and did search and rescue. And then after the oil spill, I Got a hankering for a helicopter. It's my craft school for information Zulu current, altimeter 2 niner niner 6. Captain Hazelwood helped fund my helicopter addiction. Bought a Hanstrom and flew that for a couple of years, but I realized without any instruction I wasn't long before I was going to be a statistic. But I sold my Hanstrom, and 20 years later I, I met Lee and our pal had joined, and at that time we started our 135 operation. And, uh, bought a helicopter with a friend named Douglas and uh, started out on an aviation career and just been, uh, and never looked back. That's awesome. <laughs> um, so tell me, you guys, how did we go from, um, owning a business, running a business to, I'm going to go across the continental United States in a helicopter. <laughs> Well, Mike and I have traveled quite a bit. It's, uh, it's pretty seasonal in Alaska, so the last few years we've been taking the R-66 south and spending winter, winters in the southwest U.S. And so when we actually sold the business, it was right during COVID, um, we could, we were thanking our lucky stars because we were kind of looking for our, our, our way out. We had a five-year plan, and when COVID hit, we were like, oh, our five-year plan's never going to happen. But little did we know, real estate everything else went crazy and everybody started buying stuff so yeah. we were able to sell uh, and walk away and then we kept one r44 for ourselves and we're like well, i don't think that's enough to carry all of our gear we like to have the stand-up paddle boards and we like to have i like to have my yoga mats and we've been looking at cell 505 for a long time Tower warrior four three four five six four thousand five hundred inbound we decided that the 505 was the perfect machine for us to be able to carry all our gear and travel the country yep. and the other other uh, other countries comfortably. Just amazing people that we're meeting along the way and adventures that we're having. Uh, and I, it's all because we're we're in the 505. There's a lot of people out there that have an interest in it, and it's just uh, fun, amazing yeah. uh, adventure that we're on. That's awesome. So the fun part for us is that we've been working uh, as professional pilots for so many years, and we've never been able to be away from Alaska during this time of the year. Yeah. So now we're flying for fun and just really embracing the whole lifestyle of traveling by helicopter. Well, a lot of people buy RVs. You guys <laughs> went with four, five, six, uh, five, out. <laughs> different and yeah. honestly can be a little bit stressful sometimes. Over to departure 456, thank you very much. Only because we're always deciding where we're going, like the day before or even the day of. Right. We're always real last minute on it. Yeah. But we're used to that from running a helicopter business. Cap 5 Hotel Mike, right? You'll be following a musketeer that's on the right face close in. Uh, just about to turn five. Just above the horizon. Okay, we'll be following the musketeer. We've got him in sight, 5 Hotel Mike. We're at 5 Hotel Mike, Roger. Right? Follow that musketeer. I got it. Hit the mic. Hotel Mike, we'll go. A couple days ago, we stopped in Florida and visited with a friend of mine who actually did a year of handstands with me on Instagram. I led an entire year every day handstand challenge. Wow. And she did the whole thing with me and she's just this little tiny thing. She really wanted to join the Air Force and was denied because she's 
I don't know, maybe four foot ten. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's not going to work. So I took her for a flag, just had her put her feet flat on the floor, and she blew the whole thing. She did great. All right, left base. Four out. You're right. The biggest thing to get used to is the pedals. Yeah. That's just, uh, even, well, you know, I've got a little bit of time with Brandon and the 58. And the 58 doesn't need quite as much. It does, it, it, more than the Robinson, but. And they're a little pushy. They're a little late to react. Yeah. So these are cable and the Robinson is push pull. Yeah. Musketeer 4 Delta Alpha, turn left next taxiway, Bravo, and taxi to the ramp. You remain in this frequency. Uh. All right, turn left on next time. He wanted to go to the runway? He does now, yeah. Okay, I was aiming toward the other. Tower, confirm uh, for 5 Hotel Mike. Are we cleared to the ramp, or do you want us on the runway? Hook up 5 Hotel Mike. You, you cleared the land taxiway Alpha and land short of Bravo. That musketeer is going to be taxing on Bravo. Uh, Alpha will stay this side of Bravo for the musketeer. You want to try hovering this thing? Sure, sure. Well, I mean, you're hovering it down there. Fifty. Once he's crossed, I'm sure he'll give it. Oh, it yells fifty at you. <laughs> Five Hotel Mike, uh, Roger, you know, air taxi to the ramp. Air taxi to the ramp for Five Hotel Mike, thanks. Wow, that looks great. What's that jet on the ramp over there? T-38. That's like yours? Yep. That's where you fly? Yeah. Oh. Well, that's, Very cool. that's a NASA jet. Or, or black jets. That is a NASA jet. Yep, that's an astronaut. <laughs> All right, so is this high enough, or are we too high, too low? What, what's the comfortable position this here? Is, for me, this is comfortable. Um, the tail is relatively low, so I like to stay a little bit higher. And you can do auto, you can do hover autos in this thing. It's just got so much inertia from at least 10 feet. Yeah, so, see that's hovering right there. I'll go get out of the taxiway. You'll feel it when you leave the wind. Right now, you've got it nice on the wind, so you'll have to really fight it. Or you could just land facing the wind. And stay high for me here just because of this grass berm. You got a lot of pedal left though. Push a lot more on it. It's just got a big throw. And so much easier just to land into the wind. Uh, that's what I usually like. That's what I. I don't think in boxes anymore. I think. All right, so we're going down. We're Hopefully landing. not. Landing. Are we landing? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And then you feel that little bump, that's the reverse. So you can lift it just a hair, and then that'll go away. Oh, ah, okay. Yeah. Uh, so it says we've got weight on the ground. Yep. I'm gonna roll the throttle down. And that's just the button. Yep, and then I'll get rid of it. I love that it is. Oh, <laughs> that says flyer idle. Uh -huh. It's really pilot proof. <laughs> it's pretty easy. Well, thank you for letting me fly with you today. Okay to shut down, look at that. Thanks. That's yeah. quick and easy. It's about as easy as it gets. Yeah, so all you do is generator goes off. And do you want to shut her off? Sure, I'll, I'll do it. So it's just off? Yep, push and turn. Done. Engine out, engine out. And it tells you it, it did what it asked you. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. Hey, my pleasure. Thanks, so Thanks for coming. Thanks. Hey, Mike. You too, man. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming out. Mm -hmm.